5-0-7. And Hogs today. Coming state senator and uh, Kevin Vracek, who is the new mayor of the city of Faribault. And like I said before, you got some big shoes to fill here, Kevin. I do. I do. John has been a great mayor for the last eight years. He's uh, done a lot of great things for the city of Faribault and kept some good jobs in Faribault and helped with the expansions and a lot of uh, a lot of business relationships. And you decided it's time to move on to bigger and better things. Yeah, you know, I, I think turnover is good, and uh, I think timing is well. And actually, again, I didn't think at it at first. Got approached by the state uh, leadership at the uh, Republican uh, Senate Victory Fund, and uh, started thinking about it. And you know, I said the timing is not right. My kids are still in high school, and he says, you know, John, the timing is never going to be right if to do this. He said so. I believe the timing was right for the Republican Party, and, and we had an opportunity. And uh, he wanted. He actually, this is. No lie. He said, you're going to be the sixth person. You were going to take the majority, and you're going to make Minnesota history. And the guy was right on, and we actually uh, took six spots and took the majority and uh, going into that. So I was talking to uh, Senator, former Senator Dick Day the other day, and he said, you know, you, you kind of hit it pretty good. He says, not only did you win the election, you got the majority. You're going into a brand-new building. You have a brand-new capital that's been remodeled, and you got on transportation committee as the vice chair. He says, you did pretty good. So uh, excited about that. And uh yeah, it's it's you know it's good timing, and I think it's going to be uh, an interesting year up there. There's lots of things that people want to get things done and see things get done, and I think a little bit working as a mayor as a bipartisan or nonpartisan, whichever you want to call it, I think will bring some uh, good people, uh, a lot of people up there that want to get things done and work together and get it done. Because I think the number one or number two thing I heard at the door when we knocked on a lot of doors this summer was get, getting things done. Uh, besides health care, uh, getting things done were the two big things we heard. Uh, so I think all of us, uh, both the left side and the right side up there, want to want to do that. Uh, we've been uh, meeting with all the new senators. There's uh, 21 of us, the new senators. There's 12 from the Republican side and nine on the Democrat side. And we've already been meeting together as an orientation-type group. And that's the, the underlying tone, what people want to get done up there. So I think it's going to be a good year. Obviously, it works differently in St. Paul than it does on the local city council level. You just hit on the fact that it's nonpartisan, the city council. Correct. So some of that attitude, I get the feeling you'd like to see up in St. Paul. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people, I, definitely the people that you knock on the door, you'd like to see people get along. And I know there's always going to be your differences and things like that. Uh, the core values always come up as uh, certain pe- people differ on. But there's a lot of things up there that, that aren't partisan, that, that people agree on education and transportation. There's lots of things that they do agree on at certain points of it. So. I think we all want to do that for the citizens of Minnesota and get things done. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting. I think with the uh, Republicans in control, both the House and the Senate, we'll put some pressure on the governor to, to uh, see what things can get done. And, and looking at what happened this last election, I, I think the governor should understand that people want to see something different. So I think it's going to be a good year. I know you have a majority, but you don't have a super majority. No, we don't. We're actually, like, as I said, we're in by one in the Senate. So the, the, the House picked up a few, and the, and the Senate picked up, and we're only up by one. So the 34 votes will all be important. So I've been reading from the so-called experts saying that this is going to be a contentious legislative session. You know, that's not the feeling I'm getting from, from the, the 21 new of us, us guys. Uh, again, it is new. I've you know, not worked in this environment before, and people are always like, say, you know, you're either going to like this, you're not going to like this, but you'll never forget it. So uh, I'm looking, going in with that attitude that uh, I want to get things done, and, and I think a lot of us want to do that. So we'll, we'll see. Is that a goal in the future for you, Kevin, or you want to stick with local politics? I, I don't see myself going up to the state. I, somebody asked me the other day, and I said the only place that I'd probably go is, um, is to the county after Dave Miller retires because we're both in the same district. So. Oh, okay. So I told Dave when he's ready to retire to let me know, and then I'll move over to county. And the reason for that would be? Uh, just staying local still. Yep. Just doing something different. Yep. Yep. There are committees. City Council has committees. Lots of them. They don't always meet. No. But give our listeners a sense of the committee structure at the City Council, if you would. Well, we typically have uh, the Finance Committee, a General Affairs Committee, and those are usually the two work session groups. And then the opposite Tuesdays, we meet as the full council to discuss everything else. So um, um, it's it's a well working. We used to used to meet as the three different uh, entities on a quite a regular basis, but I think lately there's been a lot more stuff handled by staff. So we do meet as a full council, even in the work sessions all the time. I can't remember the last time that we actually had a um, finance committee meeting. So is that a good move? You think? 
I think it is. I think it keeps all the council members more informed. The, it was originally formed so that you weren't at the meetings for hours and hours and hours. You know, one group would come in early and one group would stay late. But we, our meetings aren't that long anymore. We're um, we're a very well um, working together crew. So I, I think we come to conclusions um, on a pretty good basis. We talk about it and uh, and we move on. When you started, it wasn't that way, was it, John? No, it, we did actually meet more as a personnel and a finance committee and did that and met the, but I think through some of that transition, I think, as, as Kevin said, more council members wanted to know what's going on in both both areas, so we more transitioned more into just a joint committee, uh, which is both the personnel and finance, and I think that's worked relatively well, and again, you know, one of my goals is always to treat, keep meetings going. Uh, I know Chuck Ackman did as well at that, too, but I mean, we want to keep on task, get things done, and not belabor things on and on and on. So, or bring up topics that aren't on the agenda. Correct. You want know, to the, stick to what's on the agenda and move forward, and I think we've done well with that. Um, it, ha- it has changed quite a bit up, uh, in the last eight years. I mean, it was a, kind of a different structure and you've been through different city administrators and so mm-hmm. things do change and, and you fall into the niche that you feel works right and and I think we've had a very effective council in the last eight years um, so you know I think uh, Kevin has been involved in that the whole eight years so I I think he'll continue on with that um, and hope to you know I think things will keep moving I think the vision 2040 gave us a good footprint of where we want to go uh, one thing that I'll say, I think Kevin and I have done both well, is we are out in the community, and we, we're actively engaged. We're downtown. Kevin's on blue collar. I've been involved in, in multiple different things. I think that's important as a council member to be involved in a lot of things and hear a lot of different opinions and be available, and I think we do both do a, a good job of that. You see yourself expanding in that role or what, Kevin? Uh, expanding in my public. Right. Um, yeah, most likely. You know, there's there's so many things that you can do and that you should do, and there's some things that you should also avoid. Um, so I, I think as a family, my kids and my wife and I get out quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. You know, my, my wife is working down at Crack of Dawn right now, so I'll probably go have a cup of coffee and see what the local chatter is going on down there when we're done here. So it's uh, it's all about just, just getting out there and being available to the public. And I think over the last eight years, I've done a great job of that. John's always been out, you know, getting an earful here and there <laughs> and, and uh, whether you like it or not, you, you need to hear it, though. Well, I have to going to give my own opinion here. I like to see a younger person become mayor. I mean, you were younger, too, John. Younger <laughs> than me. old, Gordy? No, I'm, I'm saying only 50 now. you're younger than me by <laughs> okay. eight years. But I'm just saying that, you know, in a lot of communities, it's 50-plus. Well, I, th- I think the problem with, with mayors and council members is they're typically retired people. Because right, that's what I was getting time. at. Yep. You know, and if you look at our current council, the majority of them are, are business owners it's because they do have the flexibility in their schedule. So, you know, coming from a structured work job where I work for eight and a half hours a day, there'll be some changes. There'll be, uh, there'll be more meetings later in the day. There might not be so many luncheons or, you know, 10 o'clock meetings. Some things I'll have to adjust, and, and I'll also have to rely on the staff that we have in place, too. We have a very qualified staff system at our city of Fairbow, and and. I'm going to rely on them very heavily. Yeah. So. Did you do likewise, John? Did you? Well, I think I have a little bit more of a flexible schedule than Kevin does because of, of the service orientation, you know, with uh, with uh, CenturyLink. But right. uh, I think you have to be flexible in doing what you do. But we have a great staff. I agree with Kevin. Uh, we both agree on that. We have a good staff that handles all those things. And, you know, we shouldn't be micromanaging anyways. We're more of policy makers and decide how things should go and let the uh, staff execute what, what we as a, as a full council, all seven of us want. Uh, they execute that. So I, I think we have a good, you know, good staff to do that. I, as I said, we have a rock star staff staff actually uh, some of these people have been around forever you have you know tim murray and paul panansky mm-hmm. and delane and and uh david wanberg has come on and you know last year's he's phenomenal at what he does um you, know, you got dusty deans is the chief of uh, fire chief and he does a great job guy that came up all the way from a part-time firefighter to, to police chief or to fire chief <laughs> uh, i think annie bowen has, has done a phenomenal job with our police department in the last eight years so we really do have a rock star staff uh, and there's other people. Henry Morgan has been here for 44 years, I think, and Dwayne mm-hmm. Pemrick, and there just goes on. There's, there's, we just have a great staff, and and so I think uh, that continues to go on. Uh, we again, as a council, we try and develop our policy how we'd like to see things go, and let them execute it. You know? Mel, that's good. I, uh, I've covered city councils, not necessarily here, but in other communities where there was a lot of micromanagement. I think I. 
tell the story quite often about two and three in the morning <laughs> council meetings where they were talking about how much fertilizer to put on the park, <laughs> you know, grass. And we went through a short time with that with some transition things with, with you know, certain things that happened where we had to kind of get more hands-on and, and had to do some of those things because we did have some issues. Right. And we got involved, and we were very active for a while because we had to be. And then once we, you know, got our team put back together and things changed, we stepped back again and let, let them do their job. Well, in, in the downturn of the economy, when we were watching every penny, we, we did scrutinize a lot of things and ask, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Because the flexibility in the income wasn't there. It was either we either look at material goods or personnel, because that's all that we have. So Faribault Mayor Kevin Barachek is going to be the ear of State Senator John Jasinski about local government aid, right? Absolutely. I'm, I'm sure I've got his, uh, his hotline already all set up in my phone. So. I mean, that is a big deal for Faribault. Absolutely. It's going to be a great connection to have John up in the house because we'll be able to um, deal with issues at a local level, and if we need support from upstairs, then we can uh, we can make a simple phone call, and, and hopefully John's voicemail isn't too full, and he'll get to it. And, <laughs> and, that uh, does happen. <laughs> we, all, we all know that. But feeling. you've lived this. Oh, yeah. yeah so you yeah. know where Kevin's coming from yeah, when he absolutely. gives you a call. And I know, you know, the uh, local government and state government were actually weren't two of my choices to go on, but I think they looked at my mayor experience and, and right. put me on those. And I know they, you know, they have so many new senators coming in, they got to get, you know, jockey the schedules around to find everybody their fit. And I'm fine mm-hmm. being on anything. I didn't really care. They just asked for your priorities. And I got my first two, top two priorities were transportation and capital investment, which capital investment, you know, that's a, a huge committee to be on. Uh, we'll tour the state in the fall and we look at all the projects we spend, you know, weeks. At weeks at a time up you know, in northwest Minnesota or, or northeast Minnesota and, and traveling and looking at all kinds of different things. And I'm on that committee with uh, Senator Dave Senjum from Rochester, who's actually my seat uh, partner uh, on the Senate floor. So I'll be sitting next to him. Dave's his, a great guy. Elected. Great guy, yep. yep. And uh, actually, uh, Senator Dick Day said, you stick close to Senjum, you'll do good. So hmm. I'm actually seated next to him, and I sit right next or right in front of the uh, majority leader. So I'm in, in right in with the leadership there. So I don't you know how I lucked out with all these spots here, but uh, they put me in the mix of things, and, and I I'll, and uh, you know, I'll always remember Faribault and, and the mayor things, and as well as the rest of my district. You know, Otan and Wasika have been very supportive of me in my campaign run. So, definitely knowing uh, what their issues are as well will be important. So, what percentage of the budget is LGA? I know it's off the top of your head. About forty eight percent. Forty eight percent. Forty eight percent. So it's a very heavy number. If LGA were to ever disappear, we would have to uh, scramble to get something figured out. Which quick. Tim Pawlenty was not a believer in. Right. Local there's been, there's been a lot of opinions about LGA across the board, but uh, Fairbill has such a high percentage of non-taxable properties. I mean, if we could tax every state you know, entity that's within That's exactly city, what I told the governor yep, when he yep. was here, Governor Palenti. Yeah, we talked about that several times. Yep. And, that's, <laughs> and that's why they do keep the LGA, is to make up for those ones that we can't tax, because there's still roads and sewers and everything else that needs to be maintained in front of those properties. So. And Palenti's counter was always, well, we bring you all these jobs. And I said, a lot of the jobs aren't... Here in Faribault. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yep. You know, and I think with the, the a little bit of a shift uh, from the outstate, you know, the Republicans are typically in the outstate Minnesota where LGA is very important. So I know a lot of the new people coming in, or the new uh, senators coming in, understand that because they're coming from their district. And, and if they don't understand, I'll educate them on how important it is. So, Well, in the last yeah. uh, budget outlook, saw a surplus. No, I don't know if the February numbers will be the, the February same. numbers is, you know, and things we start up obviously next Tuesday, but things are run a little slow until that February forecast yes. comes in from what I understand. Other than, than health care. You know, health care is going to be pretty active right away. I'm sure that will be our Senate file number one. It's something to do with health care and what we have to do. And obviously uh, we have to wait a little bit on what's going on at a federal level, but we need to, you know, Minsure is separate from that as well, so we'll have to get going on some things. And, again, we've got these three new great committees uh, that will look into these issues. So, um, but LGA, you know, is something that will always be important. And I think the biggest thing about LGA is just stability, knowing what it's going to be. When you see, you know, major shifts up or down, uh, that's the, the big thing. Obviously, we are not too concerned about upward shifts. But uh, <laughs> when they start, you know, altering that, and it, it makes us, and that's what happened back in 2010. They did the unallotment, you know, in the December uh, time frame, which is the end of our budget and the middle of their budget. So it, it had a, a big effect. So when we're trying to scramble and cut cut that money to make sure we you know, can pay for everything, it, it's tough. Well, for lack of a better term, they're kicking the can down the road. Yeah, I've we've Absolutely. heard that comment. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, well, for years. You know, they took money from the school district a few years back. And, you know, I don't even know if the schools ever got that money repaid that they were supposed to get. But it's uh, it's all about robbing Peter to pay Paul. 
Everywhere, every level, and you have nobody to kick the can down to. No, we got a we got our taxpayers that you know, but we sit next to them every day. So it's not like you want to hurt your neighbor. So we have to be very careful when we do do our taxes. No, and you're a taxpayer too. Yes, absolutely. You know. So, what are your priorities as you come into office here, Kevin? Um, I would say the main priority that I have is just to keep a positive council, because if you keep a positive council, it makes your employees happier. So, you know, um, Brian Anderson, the city administrator, is our direct report. He reports to us. We report to him. Um, and then everything filters down the chain. So um, I, I think if we keep everything on a positive attitude, it'll help make things flow better. So if you have an issue, something happening in the police department, I'm just throwing this out as an example. Sure. You go to Brian, not directly to Andy Bowler. Correct. The chief. Absolutely. Yep. Let Brian handle it. Yep. Not you calling the chief okay. directly. That is correct. Yep, everything that a council member does should flow through the city administrator. I see John nodding his head in approval. Over would, uh, you know, other than questions, you have a you know a question about something. Why is this right. done? We have, you know, that's always been our policy. But again, for for our administrator to do an effective job, and and Steve Underdahl always uses the hourglass uh, theory on that. Mm-hmm. So you actually the, the administrator is, if you think of an hourglass or a three minute time or whatever you want to call it, uh, at that choke point there between where the top half and the bottom half, that's the where administrator's position. So he has to take all the information that we give him on the top half and distribute that all to the bottom half of how it's done. So it's it's a good analogy. It works well, uh, but it put it does put pressure on administrator that you know that administrator position is difficult because you're taking seven different opinions, and then you have to distribute it to you know 138 different uh, people in the city or whatever our number is right now, 136 I think is what it is but right. yeah so it's it's a tough position there's a lot of pressure on it uh, Brian has done well and I hope he continues to uh, do well in the future yeah that's another interesting point the city of Faribault is one of its major employers yes it is you know. yep. With all those employees, I mean, it, it falls pretty down between the school district and some of these other big companies. Right. We have. It's, it's not a huge one, but you know, 134 employers is 134, 138 employees is a lot. It's a, it's a very visible company because we have so many vehicles on the road every day, and we're out, uh, you know, working streets and parks and everything else. So um, they're seen quite often. So, what advice would you give Kevin Baracek, the incoming mayor, the outgoing mayor? What advice would you give him? You know, I think Kevin has seen what I've done the last eight years. I think he has the same mentality of letting letting our people do the work, uh, developing policy, and letting them execute. Um, he already does what what I would say is be out in the public. He does a great job at that. So, you know, there's not a lot of advice that he doesn't know that you know that he, we're on the same wavelength, and I think we're a lot of the same personality. We travel a little bit different circles, and he's in, you know than I do, but we really, I think, we really feel the same way. Um, so, again, develop policy and let staff execute and uh, make sure that we have a good working environment for everybody and keep the council positive. Negative, uh, negative comments and negative attitudes in the council never uh, come out with positive results. So I think keeping the council positive, uh, keeping them on task, uh, making sure meetings don't go super long because you have a long meetings every Tuesday night, that makes staff frustrated. And that, you know, So that's what I've always worked at. I know he knows my feelings on those, and I think he's going to do a great job. Now, keeping the council positive doesn't necessarily mean that you all have the same opinion, right? Oh, absolutely not. That's why we come from such different backgrounds. I mean, our, our two new council members coming in come from different backgrounds than everybody else on the current committee. So it's um, it's a, a well-rounded, and we got a little touch of everybody, and mm-hmm. I think it just makes everything flow better together. Now, I've been gone for the last uh, three days, five four, days, five days, whatever it is. I saw you the basketball game last night. Oh, so, you just came back. Yeah, I just, got, I just flew in yesterday. Okay. I was really tired. I got up at three thirty in the morning to jump on a plane. To come. Well, you you saw a great game though, didn't you? I saw two great games. Yeah, oh, the yeah, girls yep. did the girls and the boys. Anyway, um, where was I? You've been gone for a few days. Yeah, so you may have discussed this already publicly. I don't know, but how are they going to choose the other council member? Well, um, so I'll get sworn in on the third, right? And that'll create the vacancy, and then we'll talk about how to fill it. So there's multiple ways that we can go. We can we can grab the next vote getter. Uh, from the election back in November, uh, we can appoint somebody from um, a slate of of anybody that we choose. The next vote getter was a current council member, correct? Which uh, which putting John back in would make a whole lot of sense because he's up to speed on everything. Right, he's already got all the policies and procedures in place. And it it um, the transition would be the easiest. He doesn't have to accept it, of course. He doesn't have to, but I think he would. Yeah, I think he's made that that point clear that he would. You know, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that makes sense. Right. Yep. I was just curious. Yep. I know listeners would kill me if I didn't ask the question. I mean, we could appoint you if you wanted. 
I don't have time for this. All right. Okay. <laughs> All the games I go to. <laughs> That's why I'm not there most Tuesdays. Right. Yep. Which is kind of a shame. But yep. now you do uh, have them archived. Right. So yep. you can go back and look at. Yep, all of our meetings. regular meetings you can, but not our work sessions. So, And I see that changing sometime in the near future. John is tired of me asking this every time he's on the show, <laughs> but he knows what's coming, don't you? Nope, not a clue. The South interchange? <laughs> the South interchange? Well, that's why he's on the Transportation Committee now, so that he can that, get our interchanges in. That's what I was getting at here you know but i know I'll, it's not a priority i'll give you my opinion i don't have a problem with it you know I, I don't think the south interchange is the one we want to focus on i think the north interchange i think the the, the major growth is coming from the metro so to line up i actually just met with a company looking at uh looking at a project in Faribault uh for a facility and their thing is access and access coming into that industrial park area so i believe the north end is the way to go we have a, a comprehensive land land use plan that shows our growth going to the north so i think that's where, where it needs to go uh south i don't see as much growth uh, and our infrastructure is set up better to the north as well. So uh, the county has been upgrading their roads uh, along that. You know, mm-hmm. to get a warrant, what they call for an interchange, you have to have the, the auxiliary roads around there, arterial roads around them upgraded. You saw County Road 46 all upgraded this summer with all the new concrete all the way up to Co- County Road 1. Uh, Acorn Trail was upgraded two years ago. So they're setting the thing in place to have uh, County Road 9 as the interchange. So I think it will go to the north. You couldn't do both? I think we'd be lucky to get one. So with the funding and financing, things like that, I think we'd be happy to get one. And, okay. again, I think the no. most uh, pressure coming for growth is from the north and from the metro. It's just half an interchange drives me crazy. <laughs> it, it does. I mean, it makes no sense. Yeah. Well, I've come right out of time. Happens. Hopefully you'll come on more often. Well, we want uh, we want the city to be here every month. So. And same with you, John. Already had me back. invite me anytime. I'm happy to come. Uh, our schedule is, is open on Fridays, uh, so we're only planning on uh, – uh, meeting uh, Monday through Thursdays because okay. we have a lot of outstate guys. We'll be in touch. That concludes today's edition of AM Minnesota on KDHL AM in Faribault, Minnesota. Happy New Year, everybody, and don't party too hardy, okay?